Welcome to the GTN show. What have we got in store this week, Mark? Wow. We have another weekend of exciting racing to talk about on both ends of the scale this time. We have the mixed team relay Olympic qualification and on the other end, we have world champions winning at Ironman Tulsa. Yeah, but don't worry, we are not stopping at the racing. We've got running world records, an almost running world record, the effects of a 200K run and some exciting tech from Wahoo. Oh, and a new solar powered device as well. Oh, let's crack on. We're going to start this week's show off with a few light-hearted stories that we spotted over the last seven days. And this first one is definitely light-hearted for us to watch, but maybe not for Steve McKenna himself. Let's take a look at this. Yep, so Steve McKenna has, well, unfortunately had a bit of an injury, he's had an operation. He said, what have I been up to? Had a pin holding my toe together for four weeks and couldn't get it wet since Challenge Shepparton. I took two weeks of complete rest and then did what all exercise addicts would do, got innovative for 30 minutes per day. And he's literally, well, taped his foot up in a bag for swimming and put that on a woggle, then cut a hole in his tri shoe. Yeah, very clever and... Yeah. Um, it's such a type A personality triathlete kind of thing to do and yeah. people just can't sit still and have got to be doing something. Hopefully that's not going to get in the way of its recovery, but um, yeah, in in genius, I guess. Yeah, well, I really like this next one. Quick one uh, from Hayden Wilde as he went after a 200 RPM challenge on the bike. Oh my goodness, look how fast his legs are going. Oof. <laughs> that is, yeah, it's quite funny. It's impressive, just over. Maybe we should try that challenge sometime, Mark. Yeah. Could be, right. could be one for next week's show. Sign me up. <laughs> um, talking of 200, this time it's 200K. What your legs feel like the day after? We've got Florian Nurschwander showing us just how it felt to walk down the stairs. I've got to say, this partly impresses me, although it looks painful, is that I've looked worse than that after a 10 kilometer run. <laughs> so I was actually just impressed that he's walking as well as he is down uh, down the stairs after 200K. But he is the same chap that broke the 100K mm. treadmill world record. So um, he's a, a very good athlete. So for him to look that bad after 200K. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should see what you walk down the stairs after your next ultra. <laughs> yeah. We could do a like, walk down the stairs um, competition. Next one, uh, this comes from the Fell Core Squad up in Scotland. Um, uh, a group of guys that I follow, know a couple of guys in there, and I just, they do some of the most amazing runs. Check this out though. And unfortunately, the big stumble at the end, which oh, looks- Oh, it made me, yeah, sit on the edge of my seat. Yeah, it looks painful and just, yeah, don't could've, try this yeah, one at home, guys. Uh, but finally, we have uh, a short snippet from one of the PTO's new videos. It's called The Captain's Cooler. Sam Long chatting to triathlon legend Mark Allen about the rivalry between himself and Rudy Von Berg as they go after that Collins Cup spot. Yeah, I think there's a few more of those actually coming up, so keep an eye out. They're just going to be getting some sort of behind the scenes as it all hots up ahead of the Collins Cup selection, which isn't too far away. But also, guys, if you see any clips on social media or anything that you just spot in your sort of day-to-day -day triathlon lies, then do share with us because this is kind of just a little fun section that we want to include all sorts of interesting stories. You can share them using the uploader. But now moving on with Try News, and you've probably heard us chatting about Park Run here on the channel before. It's a free to enter 5K event that happens all around the UK, but also all around the world. And it's looking to come back and get going again after the lockdown in the UK. It was set for June the 5th, but there's been a little bit of a delay because lots of the landowners have actually not agreed to having these events happen again yet. And the problem being, you could set off some events, but the Park Run were worried that with the, pop you know, the popularity of running since lockdown, that there would be so many people driving to these other ones that they would just get bombarded. So they have actually postponed that to June the 26th, but I think now with a bit of press coverage, it's looking like sort of the pressure on the landowners, we are gonna be good to go. And I think 80 to 90% of the park runs are gonna be back at the end of June, and I can't wait. That is brilliant news. Well, now moving over to the Czech Republic and to the Golden Spike meeting. Now, Joshua Cheptegei already holds the 5,000 and 10,000 meter world records. Well, he tried to add another to his records. It was the 3,000 meter. Now to do that, he had to run faster than seven minutes, 20 seconds, 0.67, which has stood since 1991. Well, he failed on that attempt. He ran 7.33.24. 
before. And I think it just is worth a mention, really, because that record is just outstanding. It's stood yeah. for, you know, nearly And it's not been years. broken by the, the, the shoes as well, which is kind yeah. of quite exciting to see a record that is just that much ahead of the, its time. Absolutely amazing. Well, we do have a success story, and this one was from South Africa. It was a 50 kilometer record attempt, and we had the world record broken by Nagasa Kitama. He ran a time of two hours, 42 minutes and seven seconds, beating the previous record, which was two hours, 42 minutes and 30 seconds. So yeah, that is a pace of 315 per yeah. kilometer. Go and try and run one of those, have a bit of a rest and try and do 49 more. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Well, moving on now to a little bit of sad news. The ex-Commonwealth and European marathon champion, Ron Hill, has passed away at the age of 82. But it gives us the opportunity to celebrate some of the incredible achievements in his life. He went to three Olympic Games. He was the first Briton to win the Boston Marathon in 1970, in a time of two hours, 10 minutes, 30 seconds, taking three minutes off the previous record. He actually, with his overall personal best of a two hour, nine minutes, ends up as still the 12th fastest Briton over the marathon distance. Which is mad when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, about then. And even with the shoes coming yeah, through as well. Um, now, in case you're wondering why you know or have heard of the name Ron Hill, but perhaps not accustomed or know about the results that he's achieved, it may be because of his very popular and iconic running sports brand. Now, it was actually the, well, he was the first person to use synthetic fabrics within clothing and obviously in sportswear. And that was all due to being a textile chemist and uh, training through that. Now, he actually set up the Ron Hill sports brand in September of 1970. So the same year that he had the success at Boston, but also something that I've always found amazing when I first heard about this is the fact that he's run at least a mile every day for over 52 years. He started doing it on the 20th of December, 1964, through to the 31st of January, 2017 even with a snap sternum oh. following a car crash, and for six weeks in a plaster cast after an operation on yeah. its foot, which is probably not, <laughs> not what the doctor yeah, would. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But um, what uh, yeah. Yeah, an amazing well, athlete. Well, that was to the age of 78, I think. But yeah, if you guys are still, if you haven't looked up, the, the iconic trousers, now, I distinctly remember, it was my coaches that wore them, the ones with the stirrup under the bottom, and you still see people wearing them now, but maybe they're gonna make a resurgence. We've got used to seeing races looking a little bit different this season and obviously due to COVID. Well, Ironman Lake Placid is going ahead and it has a few adaptations, a 20% smaller capacity, which is kind of understandable, but they're actually putting in a requirement for a COVID a vaccine and the proof of having one, both for the athletes, the staff, and basically anyone who's involved in the event, the spectators as well. So it's causing a bit of a sort of debate because obviously it's great for the locals. That's kind of the main reason for it to actually go ahead. The town was saying, well, we don't want all these athletes coming in if they've got the chance to bring it. So that has been the stipulation that Ironman have had to sort of agree to. But some athletes, especially those maybe traveling from Canada where the sort of vaccination rate is much lower and other countries that maybe aren't sort of up on it like America are, it's, it's kind of if you've entered that event and maybe you now can't get your vaccine in time, it is kind of posing problems for some, but it's, potentially a way we could see sort of events go forward. And I guess, especially as the months roll down and more and more people have actually had their vaccine. Yeah, that is interesting. Well, no other events have yet stipulated or required vaccinations. However, the New York Marathon has announced and confirmed that it will move forward with its plans for a 40% smaller field for their event later this year. Um, it does say they do require a negative COVID test prior to, or obviously a vaccination. But yeah, that's also an interesting move for yeah. that big event. Okay, now for the tech news and well, I love my music. So this first one really caught my eye. It comes from Urbanista. It's a set of solar powered headphones. You heard me right. Pretty exciting. It converts outdoor and indoor light into energy for what they claim is virtually infinite playtime, which is pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, it's amazing. I mean, the fact that it can be indoor light as well, because when I saw this, I was like, they're not much use in the UK, are they? <laughs> no, exactly. Well, it goes on actually, because it says, in sunny conditions, an hour spent outdoors converted to three hours of playback time or playtime. Two hours, sorry, an hour spent in cloudy conditions is converted to two hours of playtime. Yeah. So yeah, even in the UK, we can get, <laughs> awesome. get some use of this. And they're not out just yet. They come out later this summer, um, but they'll cost just £169, which is pretty reasonable for, kind for of noise, what they put. Yeah, and they're noise cancelling yeah. as well. 
Oh, they do sound pretty cool. Well, you know how we love eco stuff here. Well, there's a new sustainable running brand called Zuma who have just launched and they've got some pretty bright, crazy colors. They're doing vest caps, uh, socks, and I think they've got shorts that are about to come. Now they're using 100% recycled fabric and they're also planting a tree for every single item that they sell, which is pretty wacky. And there's just a bit of stats here on how they're actually making their products. So the plastic bottles are collected from the ocean, which sees them, uh, the plastics crushed, melted and turned into a fabric. And apparently this process uses 70% less energy and produces 54% fewer carbon emissions than traditional sportswear manufacturing. So um, yeah, it's just a pretty nice story and a nice looking brand. Okay, we've also got a couple of products that we have here in the flesh to show you guys. So a brand new and updated element bolt from Wahoo. Now the design of it is very similar, but it packs even more than the previous ones. So we have similarly sized a screen, it's 2.2 inch, but this time in color, Ooh. 64 color. It also has a scratch resistant Gorilla Glass screen, which obviously is gonna be very durable. It's also got increased battery time, so around 15 hours plus. It's got increased memory storage, so 16 gigabytes now, and Although it was incredibly quick charging before, it's now got USB-C charging port on the bottom, so it's gonna be super lightning fast. Also, little additional extras, the mapping and routing um, function now reroutes if you were to stray away from your course, and also integrating that multi-sport function, switching over from the watch to the bolt and back to the watch and so on. Cool, and it looks, it's a, it's a bit darker than before. It looks a bit slicker. It looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks very stealthy to it go does. with that aero profile. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to using it. And also, just small things like the buttons feel just that little bit of improvement nice. on it. So, yeah. Look forward to using that one. Cool. Well, they also have a new release from Specialized. They've had an update of their Sotero saddles. They've just launched two new ones, the Sotero and the Sotero Plus, and they've been working with Sarah True and S Racing to develop these. This Sotero Plus is actually five mil thicker, and it does feel quite thick. It's designed to just give you that much more comfort. And basically, the whole aim is to be able to allow the rider or the user to get into that more aero position and be able to hold it for longer, and as a result, go faster. Racing now, and it was quite a lot of exciting stuff going on with the pressure building up to the Olympics. And the biggest sort of race pressure cooker was for the mixed relay, because it was, I think, one of the last chances for teams to actually qualify their country for the Olympic Games. And there's kind of two things they had to do. They had to be a top three finish at the Lisbon World Cup this weekend, but also make sure that all four of their team members actually end up in the top 140 in the world ranking. That doesn't actually end this weekend, but that's kind of part of the extra criteria. So just to remind you, for the Team Mix Relay, this event was a 300 meter swim, 7.2K bike, and a 1.8K run, and it goes women, men, women, men. So it's pretty fast and furious, lots of lead changes, but it ended up being Belgium taking the win. It was Italy second, and Switzerland who crept in to get that third very important slot because they do, all of those nations have their athletes already qualified. So that means they're guaranteed to go. And you might've noticed the Norwegians were really kind of trying to get there. They were just a few seconds out finishing in fourth. Although one of their athletes is outside the top 140. So they would still have a lot of work to do anyway. Yeah, very, very tight racing. And interestingly, the PTO, the Professional Triathletes Organization, also were supporting this event yeah. with some extra financial um, prize, prize money. But over on to the individual racing, obviously this was just as hot. In the men's racing, it was Christian Blumenfeld that took the win, Max Studer that took second, and then Genius Grau in third. But amazingly, all of the top 10, bar one, went sub 30 for that final 10K. And even that one <laughs> went 30 minutes and one second. And interestingly, I mean, Mario Mola, who used to dominate all you know the, the triathlons and the runs off the bike, he had the slowest run, bar that one, Martin Van Riel, out of the top 10. I mean, Christian Blumenfeld ran a 29.06. Oh, he did say in his post that he you know, was feeling good in the run and he knows he's in good form. I was like, that is definitely good form, isn't it? Not bad at all, yeah. It's looking exciting ahead of the games. Well, the women's race was pretty exciting as well. It was Nicola Spirig who dominated, but not until later on in the bike. So she had a 30 second deficit after the swim, but we know how strong she is on the bike. She got into the pack and sort of really made an impression there, but wasn't first out of T2. It took a little few K into the run until she caught Carolyn Hayes, Marland, who was having a great race. And she sort of, there's a bit of tussling, but then the final K, Nicola Spirig just put the burners down. 
and took the win. So a great weekend for Switzerland. It was Karen Hayes of um, Ireland who was second. And then Kristen Casper from the USA was third, just adding to the kind of nightmare of a headache for the USA selectors ahead of the Olympic team selection for, for, yeah, for them. It's going to be crazy. So many girls. I think Summer Rappaport this time was actually ninth, so still in the mix. But, I mean, she's already qualified. The others, it's, you know, a bit of a battle. Then we also had Ironman Tulsa, which had just oh. a phenomenal field, as does every race at the moment. But this one in particular had two Ironman world champions racing, Daniel Reef and Patrick Langer. Now on the men's race, we had kind of the expected athletes off the front in a big pack. And then we had the likes of Sam Long, Joe Skipper in a pack further behind, chasing them down. But fortunately, not really eating into that gap that much at all. It was Patrick Langer that took off on the run uns unsurprisingly and we had quite a few athletes jostling around for that second and third spot for quite a while. Daniel Backegaard moved up then he drifted back and then seemed to find his legs again as he moved back up to second place but it was Jan van Berkel who just came storming through a guy that just looked like he was on a mission. He just started picking them off one by one and finally made his way up into second. So it's Patrick Lang that took the win, Jan van Berkel in second, and Daniel Bakkegaard in third. Well, it's an equally exciting race over on the women's side. It's Pamela Oliveira who led out the swim as we're kind of quite used to seeing her do, but Daniela Reef did manage to catch her and it looked as though she was gonna stay with Daniela for a little bit, but I think maybe burnt her matches because that was pretty much the last that she featured in the race and it ended up being a sort of another typical performance by Daniela Reef. Although her run wasn't as strong, but that could have been because she was out in the lead so she did take the win and also you've got to remember she's put in phenomenal well, performance yeah, St. George, at St George yeah. and I wonder whether that was starting to yeah. bite a little bit she did allude in some of her sort of post race posts that you know it was a hard one it was tough but the sort of excitement was further back in the field I'm just going to read the results now so Kat Matthews came second and Sky Munch was third but I'm not going to say much more than that because we've actually got a nice little race review from Kat Matthews herself Really pleased with how my race went yesterday. I exceeded my expectations uh, on outcome by being so close to Daniela at the finish. Um, I didn't have a good swim. I lost the group after maybe 400, 500 meters and swam the rest on my own, which I was really disappointed about. Um, really attacked the first half of the, the bike. I This was part of the game plan to just go over my comfort zone um, and find the group or stay with the group that I needed to be with for the rest of the race. I managed to do that and I found Kim and Sky after about an hour and a half. Um, stayed with them uh, for the rest of the bike. Got a penalty for coming into a climb a bit too close before an aid station, which was unfortunate. Took a five minute penalty at T2 um, and then just downhill on the run. It just felt great. Um, I pinged Sarah Crowley who'd got me while I was in the penalty tent after maybe a kilometre. I was running just over three thirties. And then feeling really confident as I got down on the flat bit of the course, I was pretty happy that I was on for a good run and that I would be catching Sky. But that was a bonus at this point. Uh, as I got closer, I caught her at about 28 kilometers. Um, felt really strong for another 5K or so and then started to really hurt. But to finish that strong and run a 2.49, yeah, I'm really, really chuffed and I'm really looking forward to Hawaii this year. Well, a massive thank you, Kat, for sending that in and massive congratulations because that was a phenomenal run, wasn't it? Well, all round racing, but well, I yeah. have to say, having watched the running and Mark, her husband, posting these videos, honestly, Kat, phenomenal running and uh, that speed that she went past Sky, oh, literally I love that down the <laughs> descent. She's obviously very good at that, but it just she just looks like such a classy runner. Yeah. Really, really good. Well, it's also very exciting for us and for you guys because we're going to have Kat in a video on GTN very soon. It was planned before this, so we're going to be picking her brains after her great performance to so keep an eye out for that one. Well, yeah, hopefully she's not too big time now that she doesn't come on yeah. one of our videos. And I might be hoping she's a little bit tired, but I'm not going to tell you any more than that <laughs> about that video that is coming up. But moving on, um, we've got some news from the PTO and they have just announced that they are going to be supporting the Deuces Wild Endurance Festival which is held in the White Mountains in northeast Arizona. It's a 70.3 and they're putting in a $15,000 prize purse to help with the um, with the athletes but also it's going to become another one of those events that they're going to be looking at for the ranking points for the Collins Cup which I think you've got an update on. Yes I do because obviously this weekend Team Europe 
essentially for the Collins Cup, almost dominated at Tulsa. Even though it's a race in America. I know. <laughs> I mean, five of the six podium spots were taken by European athletes and only Sky Munch from the USA breaking into that podium. And well, the stacked European men's field has got even crazier because Patrick Langer, although we don't have confirmed points right now, is surely going to jump into that insane melting pot of which we've got Jan Frodeno, Gustav Eden, Alistair Brownlee, Christian Blumenfeld, Sebastian Keenley, Javier Gomez, Von St. Louis. I mean, all absolutely phenomenal athletes. So now, obviously, to have Patrick in there, whoo, yeah. it's going to be crazy. The women's, obviously, Kat is expected to jump up considerably. Now, interestingly, it could end up meaning that we have four of the six women's spots for Team Europe taken up by British athletes. We've got wow. Lucy Charles Barkley, yeah. Holly Lawrence, Emma Pallant, Jodie Stimson all fighting up there for top positions. So yeah, stay tuned, watch the space because it's getting very exciting now. We've got a couple of picks that we've chosen this week to share with you. And this first one comes from Kevin in Copenhagen in Denmark. And I've chosen this one because I was quite surprised and sort of pleasantly surprised that it's not just us in the UK that have been experiencing a lot of mud recently. So this is, um, he says, the 2021 version of the Hurl of Triathlon turned into a duathlon thanks to Corona. But then apparently they had to change due to the space needed. So the transition was moved into a parking lot, from a parking lot into a gravel field. But the night before saw heavy rain and it turned into a muddy chaos many many bikes were not happy that day i reckon many athletes weren't as well it's a sort of um a situation where i'd probably just carry the bike out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good uh, next one though i love this this comes in from michael from switzerland uh, with his felt ia2 2016 version um which he has gone to town on he customizing has. um he has painted it himself with uh, spray cans at home with stencils in preparation for his two ironmans this year frankfurt and tun um but yeah i mean he's gone he's it's you know literally away. stripped the bike down fully as you should if you're spraying your bike yeah. he's got the ironman logo on the front high road cycling company which obviously i know bike shop or something locally to him um but he's done a fabulous job and really really clean work i mean you can get with spray cans you can get some bleeding and stuff around mm -hmm. the uh, stencils so very good job i'm very impressed at that and i think i should take some inspiration Probably not for my own felt IA, but <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe, careful. maybe for my little upgrade bike that I've been That'd working be cool. on. Um, but yeah, fabulous work. If you've got any more photos, videos that you'd like to share with us, please do using the photo uploader. It's on screen right now, or you can find it in the description just down below. Okay, now for the caption competition. Last week we had this photo from Yokohama with Casillas. Ah, unfortunately poking herself in the eye with uh, the arm of her sunglasses. Yeah, well, some actually like a huge array of really good um, captions. We've had to narrow it down. This first one's from the Dom Louis. Not sure I like the look of these glasses. They're a bit of an eyesore. <laughs> there were so many good ones this week, actually. We, we, had, we worked hard to kind of whittle this down. <laughs> uh, Dave Reed, don't worry. I've got this. <laughs> uh, Tomahawk, these new sunglasses are a real eye catcher. <laughs> Oh, the simple ones are the best. Uh, Daniel Clark, I didn't see that coming. But our winner this week is Wade Whitboy. And this is kind of, it's great. It's got two jokes within it. It says, from it's from Casillas to Casilles <laughs> after an incident with their Pokeleys. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, we'll get in touch. Um, we'll ping a swim cap out to you ASAP. But now for this week's caption comp photo from Tulsa this weekend, Patrick Langer looking very excited. <laughs> well, I guess he has pretty good reason to be looking excited as he has just won an Ironman Tulsa. But get far more imaginative than that. You guys know what to do. Leave those suggestions in the comments section below when mum says it's pizza night ah! <laughs> <laughs> i would be excited i just imagine patrick back home when mum says it's pizza. So anyway yeah. um yeah we've got loads coming up on the channel and um, if you'd like to see our top 10 excuses for a poor performance stay tuned for that as well as why are you not getting faster at running you will also notice that we've got some new colored t-shirts um on the we channel have. we've got two new teal we've got the teal and Desert, desert dust. Oh, you have got yeah. it. Oh, it is there. I'm just, it's not quite warm enough yet for um, t-shirts. So yeah, uh, go check out our shop for the new core t-shirt range. Yeah, and remember, if you have liked it, hit that like button, and you can subscribe by hitting the globe if you haven't done so yet. And a couple of videos to leave you with: How easy should an easy run be? If you want to know click on the screen right now. And switching from a road bike to a triathlon bike, it's that time of year. If you want some tips, check out that video. <laughs>